I greet you cordially from Poland and through the media we can be a little bit closer. And we are at our Lenten retreats and today's theme, this year theme of our Lenten retreats is how can we find peace of God in our troubled times. This is our second exercise, the third conference, but the second exercise that St. Paul is teaching us and uh, how to keep God's peace in traumatic situations or just in difficult everyday events. That's our questions for the retreats. During our retreat this year, we go to St. Paul, who writes to us in his letters that each one of us can learn peace of heart. It is not something inherent or meant for the elect. Any Christian can learn it. This is the nature of Christian peace. That inner heart balance, awareness of God's presence, and a sense of His all-encompassing protection. How can you learn peace of God? Or how to find peace of God? St. Paul gives us three exercises. Training to think about God, or in thinking about God. Second, practicing thanksgiving. And third, exercising in love. Today, the second exercise. Thanking God. The thank you God exercise. Living in gratitude, living each day in gratitude to God. I am grateful to Him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because He considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. Paul writes to Timothy. Practice thanking God. St. Paul is about thanking him for joy and also for difficult experiences. In a letter to the Philippians, Paul writes, Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. When you thank God, you pay tribute to Him, recognizing that He is the King of all, and He is always a generous donor. Faith is not just recognizing the truth that God exists, but faith is recognizing the truth that God has control over our lives. When you thank God, you release yourself from worries, black thoughts, and you put everything into God's hands, God's heart. When you thank God, you already receive. When you thank God, you have the attitude of a child, child that is taken care of, a child of God. When you are thankful to God, you notice more things and more beautiful and good situations in your life. When you thank God, the heart becomes more in peace. There is more peace in it by thanking God, by being thankful. When you thank God, your self-esteem increases because you see how much wealth you have in your life. You are more aware of who you are and where you come from and how great is your worth. When you thank God, you pay more attention to it what you have, not what you have not. There is a story about a king. Every morning, a very rich and powerful king received homage from his subjects. He had gained everything he could in his life and was starting to get a little bored. Among the various subjects who came every day to the king was a poor, quiet man. He had been bringing the king an apple. Then he walked away as quietly as he had entered. The king, who was used to receive great gifts, was accepting the gift from a poor man with a little irony an indulgence, and as soon as the beggar turned away, he mocked him 
and all the court with him. However, the beggar was not discouraged by this. He returned every day to put into the royal hands another gift, that means another apple. The king accepted him routinely and put the apple immediately into the basket prepared for the occasion near the throne. All the apples were patiently and humbly handed over by the beggar. The basket was almost full. One day, the king's favorite monkey took one apple and bit it, then spitting it and threw it at the king's feet. The monarch was speechless as he saw a shimmering pearl inside the apple. He ordered all the fruit in the basket to be opened immediately. In each of them there was the same pearl. The astonished king immediately ordered the beggar to be summoned and began to question him. I brought you these gifts, my lord, the man replied, so that you might understand that life gives you every day an extraordinary gift that you do not even notice and throw it into the bin. All because you are surrounded by an excessive amount of riches. Sometimes we too live in great anxiety because we don't notice pearls in everyday apples, in everyday situations, in everything that surrounds us. We lack peace in our hearts because we still don't have enough for, of something. We are still chasing something. We still don't get enough attention from others. We still don't have enough money. We still don't have enough love. We still don't have or don't receive enough praise or promotions. We still do not like the situation in the government, the church, the world. Still is something wrong. Still some movement in the head, confusion, chaos, no peace. Sometimes we are just like this, like this king who is bored with life and does not notice the beautiful gifts which God offers you every day. Let's take a look around ourselves. Let's see how many gifts we fail to see. Let's start seeing them and being grateful for each one of them. Because maybe the reality is that you are looking for love and in fact you do have extraordinary love in your life. You are looking for recognition in the eyes of others, confirmations in the eyes of others, and in fact, you don't need it because you are really special and unique, capable, smart, curious. Are you looking for strength and youth? In fact, you do not even realize how great and beautiful youth and strength you have in yourself. Are you looking for beauty? Because you say beauty is over after the 70s and you don't even realize how beautiful you are. And so we feel anxiety in ourselves. We are looking, we are searching, looking for, but we already have everything. We really have everything what we need. Let's start being thankful for the rain and sun, for fatigue and rest, for understanding and rejection. Let's be grateful. All our experiences mold us, create us, make us more similar to Jesus. Be thankful for everything you experience. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. In fact, He's all we are looking for. He gives us apples with a pearl every day. Let's see how many gifts He gives us every day. Let us believe it is out of care and love for us. There is a real fire in thanking God, passion and love. 
To give you thanks, we must rise before the sun, we read in the Book of Wisdom. And in 2 Maccabeus, we read, we give him great thanks. By giving thanks, we express our love, appreciation, respect and adoration to God. Blessed are you, God, with every pure blessing, we read in the book of Tobit. Sometimes we may think, if I had youth, if I had wealth, if I had beauty, if I had a better husband, wife, life situation, then I would certainly live in God's peace. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. God gives you peace. He gives you peace in your very circumstances, in the situation you live in right now. Just notice here at last that literally in everything that God gives you, there is a hidden pearl. And you can learn peace by learning to give Him thanks for everything. Thanksgiving is contrasted with caring. St. Paul teaches us to thank God while we ask Him for something. Paul teaches us to thank God before we know His answer to our requests. Paul calls us to trust in God's power and His providence over history, over the world and over our lives. Paul tells us that we will never be satisfied until directing our fervent petitions to God and at the same time we will not admit that our life is in His hands and that He is wiser than we are. The point here is for us to be aware that only God now has the prospect of eternity from which you can see how all things work together for our good and His glory. But ultimately, we too will find ourselves in this place and see the same prospect. We will ultimately see that what we have experienced here in our lives work together for our good and God's glory. St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, that all things work together for good to those who love God. If we believe God, it means that God is sovereign, that we recognize His sovereignty over us. Since He is, since he is sovereign, He has loving power over us, that we should trust and thank Him before when we ask Him for something. We should thank Him for everything He sends us, even if we don't understand it. He knows better and He sees our lives from wider perspective. In other words, we could say that God is telling us, when my child asks me for something, I always give him what he asks for, if it knew all I know. I always give him what he asks for, if it knew all I know. Do we believe it? That means that God sees our lives in total, from the whole perspective, and He knows what is best for us. That's why sometimes we don't get what we ask for or pray for, because God knows better. For the extent that we believe that God has loving and wise power over us, we will experience peace to that extent. And if we don't believe, we won't find peace. Let us offer our prayers to God with thanksgiving. And now exercise for you and for me. I would like to propose to us an exercise that is called Gratitude Jar. The Gratitude Jar is a very simple exercise that can have profound effects on your life and on how you view your life. It only requires a jar and a pen for writing your gratitude notes. You will be repeating this every day, let's say for, for one month. You can continue it through your life. Think of at least three things, 
throughout your day that you are grateful for to God. It can be something as benign as a coffee, glass of water, piece of bread, or as grand as the love of your significant other or dear friend. Do this every day. Write down what you are grateful for to God on little slips of paper and fill the jar. Over time, you will find that you have a jar full of a myriad of reasons to be thankful to God for what you have and enjoy the life you are living. It also will cultivate a practice of expressing thanks to God and to others. If you are ever feeling especially down and need a quick pick-me-up, take a few notes out of the jar to remind yourself of who and what is good in your life. Train gratitude to God with your gratitude jar. Thank you for your listening. Thank you for your presence through the media. Thank you for this conference that we could have together. And I invite you for another one, uh, for the last one in our retreat. God bless you and let's be thankful for everything we experience in our lives. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.